Okay, the purpose of this video is going to be to help you figure out how do I actually find the diagonal length of a box. So for this situation, we are going to start in one corner. So I'm going to start you up here. And we want to find what would be the length of this rectangular prism from there all the way to the very opposite corner. So I'm going to start by drawing that length in. That red line is what we're going to try to find. And of course, we are going to use right triangles as our method for doing so. So I'm going to drop down, and I, I'm going to ask you to kind of picture this. I did my best to draw a three-dimensional picture. Picture it um, as if you're looking at the box. And if you go straight down and then you go across, we actually did just create a right triangle right there. The right angle would be in the corner. Okay, so we're trying to find, I'm going to put a D for the diagonal length that we're trying to find. And we are going to use that right triangle. So let's go ahead and redraw that right triangle over here so we can figure out what we actually know in that triangle. And then I suppose we should put some numbers. We're going to be given the three dimensions of our box. So for this example, we're going to look at number 33 on your worksheet if you're following along. Okay, and if not, this can just be a great example. Uh, 33, we're, we're given the dimensions 12, 4, and 3. It doesn't matter where you put them. You'll get the same answer. You just might have different triangles along the way. 12, 4, and 3, I went ahead and put them in. So in the triangle that I just pulled out, I do know that the height is 3. That's the same as the height out front. So I've got a 3. Oops. Let's try to make that a little bit more legible. There's my three. And I'm trying to find again that diagonal. And the question is, where's my other number? To do Pythagorean theorem, I need two numbers, um, two side lengths. So I don't actually have another side length right here. And that's going to become my mission is, how do I know, how can I figure out this bottom length? Now, if we look at that a little more closely in our three-dimensional picture, that length is the length across the bottom of the box. So if I'm looking at straight at the bottom, or the top for that matter. We should be looking at a rectangle there. I'm going to redraw that rectangle. Two-dimensional picture. So there's the rectangle looking straight at the bottom. We have a 12 and we have a 4. And the length across that becomes the bottom of my triangle that I'm trying to find the length of the diagonal. So I'm going to go ahead and use this triangle as my method for doing so. We do have a right triangle here. Oops, that was a 12. Okay. There's my 12. Let's go ahead and put the 4 over here, right triangle right here, and I'm going to call this length, which is a shared side between my two triangles, I'm going to call that x. And as soon as I know that, that's the same length as over here. Okay, so maybe we even put a different color with that. And let's make that one length green there. That shared length between the two triangles, which is, in this picture, that bottom length right there. Okay? So now we're just going to do Pythagorean theorem twice. You guys are good at Pythagorean theorem, so let's plug some numbers in and do the work. 4 squared plus 12 squared equal to x squared. 16 plus 144 equals x squared. I'm going a little fast here, so if you want to pause the video and try this on your own, that's fine. Take the square root, 16 times 10, giving me 4 radical 10 for the length of x, the diagonal of the bottom rectangle. Now go to the other triangle, and I now know that this length x is 4 radical 10. So when I go to do my Pythagorean theorem, on the second triangle, 3 squared plus x squared, which is 4 radical 10. Quantity d squared is equal to d squared. That gives me 9 plus 4 radical 10 quantity squared. I'm going to look back and notice that I actually had that right here. The 160 is 4 radical 10 quantity squared because that was my x squared. So if you catch that, you can use that little shortcut. Otherwise, you're doing 4 squared 16 times radical 10 squared is 10 and 16 times 10 giving you a 160, okay? So 9 plus 160, I'm getting 169 equal to d squared. Take the square root of both sides, and that comes out to a 13 
is the length of my diagonal. Sweet. Okay, so we actually did now solve for the length of the diagonal. Again, that is across the cube from there to there, top right, top corner to bottom corner, depending on which way you're looking at. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at one that's a little bit more abstract. 34 is very similar. Go ahead and try that one on your own, and I'm going to walk you 36. So 36. The difference with 36, I didn't give you any numbers. I gave you length, width, and height. And the advantage to figuring this out is if we can figure this out, we could, given any length, width, or height, potentially only have to do one thing, plug in one formula, and figure out what would the length of that diagonal be. We're looking at the same diagonal. That would be the diagonal from one corner to the other corner. And I'm going to look at this one right here. Okay? So I'm going to draw the same two triangles that I had before. Make that my diagonal. Other dimensions of the um, triangle, I've got my height over here, and then I've got my unknown x on the bottom, x on the bottom, which is the diagonal of, again, that rectangle. that we're calling the bottom of the box. So there's my rectangle. There's my diagonal of the rectangle that I'm calling x. Dimensions we know. We know length and width for the bottom. And at this point, you really can erase, if you want, the rest of that rectangle, and you're just looking at that one triangle. So if we're going to go ahead and do Pythagorean theorem twice, remember, our goal is, ultimately, to solve for x, because once I solve for x, then I know that this is the same thing, and then I can do my Pythagorean theorem and solve for D. So I've got W squared plus L squared is equal to X squared. All I want to do is solve for X right now. X is squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and X is the square root of W squared plus L squared. Width squared plus length squared, or length squared plus width squared. It doesn't matter what order you have that in. Okay, let's go to our second Pythagorean theorem. So now I've got x squared plus h squared is equal to d squared. My x from over here, I'm going to put it in, is square root of w squared plus l squared. But I'm squaring it. Plus h squared is equal to d squared. Remember, a square and a square root cancel each other out. So right here, I end up with square root and square cancel each other out. And I'm going to get w squared plus l squared plus h squared is equal to d squared. I'm solving for d. And what we can determine is that the length of the diagonal is actually equal to the square root of the width. Whoops, that was supposed to say width. Square root of the width squared plus the length squared plus the h, the height squared. And I know that's a lot of variables, but let's put that into perspective. What we just figured out is, given any rectangular prism, we can actually take the length, width, and the height, square them all, add them together, take the square root of that, and that will give us the diagonal length. So just because I'm a skeptic, I'm going to actually go back and try Number 33, the answer we got, recall 33, our numbers were, and you can look back at it if you want to, 12, 4, and 3 were our, our three dimensions. Okay, so what we just determined by our lovely formula is that the diagonal length should have been the square root of 12 squared. Again, I'm not worried about which one's the length, width, and height. Plus 4 squared plus 3 squared. Let's try it out. So square. 12 squared is 144, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, add them up, 144 plus 16 is giving me 160, plus 9 is giving me square root of 169, giving me 13. Pretty cool. That was our answer that we got when we did 33 the long way by doing both triangles. We just found a nice shortcut. If we were to have to do this problem a lot of times, 
maybe we're in a scenario where we're responsible for figuring out packaging for a company, we could have a nice little shortcut of how we could find that diagonal length just by using one formula, and there it is. Okay, hopefully that helps you try 34 and 35. 35 is a cube. I'd ask you to think of special right triangles when you do that one. Um, it could save you a little bit of time. Okay, good luck.